Hey guys, this is Blake here. Um, I'm here to talk about Scream 4. Yes, I know I'm late. Uh, sorry about that. I'm now using notes to read off of, just to hopefully make my reviews a little bit more coherent. I'm considering just full-on scripting them and then just reading off the text while I just show you a po picture of the poster or something. If that seems like it would be better to you or not, or if you think uh, I should just try it and then succeed based off that, let me know. Um, so, first off, when it comes to my relationship with the Scream movies, it's very love it or hate it. On one hand, I grew up with these movies. These were, uh, I guess, like how Saw is the horror movies of now. Scream was the big thing when I was a kid. And I wasn't really huge into slashers until maybe the late 90s. So, you know, the Scream movies, I think, probably were what got me into slasher films. But then I rewatched them all recently, and they didn't hold up that well. Uh, I mean, I, I still think they're good, but I don't think they're as good as the the major classics, the movies that they're referencing. Um, the first Scream, I liked the characters. I love the twists. Uh, I don't think people realize how clever the twist at the end was, just because it manipulates you into presuming so much based off your knowledge of previous mystery horror films. I also liked uh, Wes Craven's use of suspense. On the other hand, though, it just got too pompous with its with its self-satirical references. Uh, you know, sometimes I thought it was funny and sometimes I thought it was clever, but it just got so tired. It's like, this is just like a horror movie, and I just I hate that kind of dialogue. They just would not let it go. The actors don't even seem to really be sh know if they're supposed to be taking the film seriously or not. You know, like, Nev Campbell and Skeet Ulrich, they're, they're taking their roles really seriously, and Jamie Kennedy, Matthew Lillard, and David Arquette seem to think they're in a comedy, so there's some tone issues there. But like it or not, the movie did definitely revolutionize slasher films. They made the slasher films more self-aware, more satirical, more smooth and slick, and far more sucky. <laughs> I hated almost all the slasher films of the 90s because it was Scream, even though I like Scream. Even the ones that people actually like, like Halloween H2O and I Know What You Did Last Summer, I hate. And I, I actually say those two are probably the worst of the 90s slasher craze. So I was glad when that trend ended. When it came to the sequels though, Scream 2 I think I actually prefer more than the first Scream. Uh, I just like its... I thought the characters were much more compelling. I thought the actors were more consistent, so there wasn't as many issues with the tone. I thought they used the self-referential humor much more effectively. Uh, they restricted it, so at least it, all that stuff was contained for you know, film class and uh, Randy and uh, you know, when the two characters in the beginning are going to the movies. So it was more believable that way. At the same time, though, if you've seen the movie, you know that the script has so many holes, like how the killer seems to know where you're going to be and when you're going to be there. It really contrived. It felt like the script may have been unfinished. Uh, but all in all, I enjoyed it. And Screen 3, to me, is just really mediocre. I thought the, the film didn't really seem to know whether it wanted to focus more on Sydney or uh, Gale and Dewey. And Gale and Dewey just go through the same shit that they went through in Scream 2 and what they're apparently going through in real life. So they weren't that interesting to me anymore. I did like, though, how they had Sydney start having like these major hallucinations, like a Nightmare on Elm Street type dream se sequences. And I thought that was cool because all the Scream movies each have their own template of horror classics. You know, Scream 1 follows Halloween, Scream 2 follows Friday the 13th, and Scream 3 follows A Nightmare on Elm Street, and Scream 4 follows, I guess, Saw. But, uh, otherwise, the movie's just mediocre. Scream 4 now, uh, where do I even start? First off, Wes Craven trades in his suspense for, which was, uh, you know, the calls and the chase sequences, for quicker, shorter bursts of intensity that are much more violent. And I thought he used that well. Uh, whenever the ghost face would jump out of the closet, I'd be like, ah, I thought that was good. And I thought the actors from the previous movies did a good job. I still cared for them, so I cared what was going on. I did correctly guess who the killer was, but it was still, I thought, pretty unique in a way. 
maybe. Uh, I thought the it has it has its funny moments, but I think it for the most part is way too over clever. If Scream One is pompous, Scream Four makes Scream One look humble in comparison. In comparison, uh, everybody just overuses the movieish dialogue, the meta dialogue, and it became to me just that much more obvious that it was a movie. Uh, there's nothing believable about it. It's just everybody is talking about how, oh, this is just like a horror movie. I better not do this or I'm going to die. And I think it was the cinema snob said, uh, nobody's going to think like that. The real life killers aren't going to consider the rules to survive a horror film. Um, and at least I thought that was always the point in the first three films is that the rules are pretty much shit. <laughs> um, Sydney survives since, despite losing her virginity. You know, characters who've made these moves, uh, you know, who move based on the rules in order to save themselves, ended up dying. And even Randy pretty much figured that out and screamed too. How pretty much you know, reality and movies are two different things, but they always seem to forget. And in Scream Four, even Sydney and Gale start buying into this, these the rules shit. And that just became so distracting and so freaking annoying. And uh, I thought the killers, or killer, um, whoever it is, he or she overacts when they're revealed to be the killer. And that was, that's, I hate always when they do that in movies. But once again, uh, I, I enjoyed it more than Scream 3. I, I think it has its moments where it does reach a level of brilliance. Like, I love the whole original versus remake theme and how, in the end, you pretty much realize that it's all about the original versus the remake. Because when you think about it, uh, the newer cast of characters represents the remake aspect, whereas the older cast represents the older ones and who's better. Uh, but otherwise, if you're not into the Scream movies, you should definitely avoid it. It's only for us fans, and it's not as good as I think a lot of fans are saying it is. I just, once again, if I if I didn't grow up with these Scream movies, I probably would not have liked this that much. But like I said, if you like the Scream movies, definitely check it out. If you want to read my written review, just check the link in my description. Once again, let me know if you think I should start scripting these. Uh, anything else? Oh yeah, Ghostface, when you, he's in Masked, uh, is significantly bigger than all of the suspects in this movie, so that was kind of a mistake on Wes's part, but what can he do? <laughs> it is better than My Soul to Take, in my opinion, and I didn't even hate My Soul to Take as much as everybody else did. Uh, so I'll see you guys later.